Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, Danny Bamaseda over here. I'm Filipino American, and you're tuned in to Shoes Off. <laughs> I'm from the Philippines. I was born there and I came here in 96. I was nine and I lived in Bayonne, went to school there, and I basically moved to Jersey City about seven years ago. But when I came here, um, I would have certain things that I can't pronounce, like like the, like, you know, like Filipinos would say da, or like dare, right, right, right. <laughs> that, <laughs> you know, and um, I had to go to speech therapy to learn how to pronounce my th. Yeah, so like the, 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 that, there. What do you mean? I'm Go over there? there? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking normal. You don't understand what the fuck he's saying? Everything he's saying, I'm saying too. You don't understand that? Yeah, so, and I was young too. I was nine, so it was easy for me to transition to kind of like um, speak English more fluent. Like now, I think in my head, I think in English. And it's just, you know, I used to always think it's silly when I was young, but as you get older, you kind of just embrace it more because it's just really part of your your life and your culture and just like, you're kind of like, oh, okay. I like it, you it becomes more endearing rather than silly, you know? This is like the thing that I love about this new generation. It's just like expressing yourself is, these days it's like very, um, motiv like people want you to express it more in a positive way. If you're like cool and dope and you have this weird artistic thing about you, put it out there because people, People would um, people would appreciate. That's why you see now there's a lot more weirdos because it's more um, accepted. When you watch old movies, like the weird kids and the, like you know, they're always considered like oh weird, like don't talk, like you know, and it's always the jocks that are cool. Now it's the basic people are not cool anymore, you know. So yeah, so school, you know, you're allowed to wear whatever you want, and I was always and I, I always like had already like you know, kind of had this weird quirk of like just liking what I like and like. I discovered like thrifting, which is like wasn't even a thing, but that was like back then, before Macklemore was even like saying it. Cause it's like, you know, like we're like from other countries, so we come here. Sometimes you work for your money. You, you don't get um, allowance or whatever. You find a job or you like do chores at home that you um, you get paid by your parents, and then like you don't. Also, it's rare for them to buy you stuff. And then high school, it got even, you know, deeper. Like, you know, I was that kid that would skate down from my house all the way down to school with like, like a suit on during gym. And, you know, I went to a school where it didn't change, you know? So you have gym, what, first period? You're, that's it. But I didn't really sweat. But like, I'm just saying the idea of like wearing a suit um, while playing basketball and like, you know, and people are just like, what is, and I'm just like, I like it, you know? And it wasn't even to just like, you know, I, I personally don't like attention, which is funny because, you know, I have a job where like, it's always just people seeing what I do. But, but that whole thing started because I just wanted to just kind of express myself. I don't present myself as like being proud Filipino back then. Cause it wasn't like, it wasn't really talked about it as much as it is now. But now, like, you know, I mean, I, mean, I always loved being a Filipino, I thought, but like, I didn't even really notice how cool being different was back then, you know? Cause it was always cool just seeing everyone else, like all the white kids that are cool. But like, looking back now, like, no, all those individual like POC kids are cooler. Cause we all, we look different and we have a, a, a story and like, not, not I'm saying that like the white kids don't, but I'm just saying like, it wasn't as, as, um, you know, accept it to like even think like that. You know, you just always kind of think everyone else is cool, but kind of like you, because you're not, you not, you have no one else to relate. You know, and it's like kind of like, like just grains, like whatever. Not grains, all like a little. It's just scattered, because you don't really notice. You know, because you don't see, you don't see yourself in like movies and TVs and stuff like that. So you don't feel represented. So you don't, so you just kind of end up always just kind of going and like liking. Like, you know, what other things were, were cool back then. So, Cause that's all you could see. So I was more unaware 
of things rather than I'm not like lying. It's just not like I didn't like myself being Filipino. It's just that I did. There wasn't something that was hyped about it. You know, it's kind of like with clothes. Like certain people wear certain things once a cool person hypes it, but like it's always been there for sale. You know what I'm saying? So that like that analogy of like, oh, like I've always been cool, but it, I was just wasn't being hyped because you know no one was talking about. It. But now like it is, you realize, wow, I am fucking cool, and my culture's fucking cool, and all these other people that are like me, we're all just cool people, you know. And then you kind of like you become more proud, and and then you're prideful, and all these things about it, and then you just represent it out there, and it becomes genuine. I was actually just even talking about it with um, some of my friends, not even a couple years ago, saying like, well, how come Filipinos aren't, we should just be more proud and just like, you know, stop like, um, just riding on other people's waves now. Let's, it's, let's make it our turn to like, look like look at our music, look at our, look at our style, look at our culture, you know? Cause most of the time, like we're associated with hip hop or like, you know, which is great, you know? Cause that's, that's a big part of our culture too. But like, there's more than that too, you know? like. We're more than just also like, like lumpia, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like the little egg rolls that people love. Like, oh, you're Filipino? Oh, I have lumpia. Like, you know what you mean, have lumpia? Yeah, I have lumpia. Or like, oh, you're Filipino? Oh, I have a friend whose neighbor is uh, Filipino. Like, it's almost like they always have to like relate you with someone else that they know is Filipino. So, but I, I want to just be like, oh, you're Filipino? Cool, man. <laughs> you know, like, all right, like that's it. Like, you don't have to be related to like, cause imagine like, oh, dude, you're white. I okay, I have um like. You naming like 700 people that you know is white. So it's like, yeah, I have a friend who's white. It's like, it's just, it's like undertones, like racial undertones. It's not racist, but like it's ignorant mo mo mostly. Um, but like, I want that to kind of like be, um, not even be that type of like, you know, like you're Filipino, cool. Oh, you're Korean, that's dope. And it's no longer like, oh, okay. I listen to K-pop, like, come on. Like, you don't have to laugh. <laughs> it's just like, cool, that's it. It's just, everyone's just even, you know? Even in a, a, like award shows, I wanna feel like people are winning because they're winning for their talents. And it's no longer like, sometimes you kind of like scratch your head. It's like, wait, all of a sudden this year, every POC is winning? Like, are they just being given this? It's like, no, you, you gotta, I wanted to just live in a, that world where it's just, you know, award shows you do get recognized for your talent and not the skin color you know being poc in the back of the back of our heads we're like is this really legit or am i just in this trip because now we're trending um, are we just a trend so like so so now since it's just starting we kind of feel like some type of way but hopefully it continues and it just changes the game i think in the future everyone is just going to be so comfortable in their own skin which is like so great because you know and then like mentioning that they're never gonna know that feeling that we had of like you know just because we don't see ourselves represented so we're not as proud of us but now they're growing up they see everything everyone's just gonna be proud of their own culture so it's 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 a good thing um people say that sometimes people might be more sensitive back uh, in the future but like you know that's us being millennials knowing that we lived in that time too where you know we just watched a lot of things that are different to what it is now. So we don't really, we're, we're more immune to like being sensitive, I guess, you know, cause um, we get it, we get both sides. And so we get when someone's joking and we get when someone is just, you know, doing something for attention. Right now we're in another man's treasure in Jersey City. Um, I pre previously worked here, uh, I'd say about like four years ago. The blogging started right after high school. Um, everyone's off to college. I couldn't go to college because unfortunately I, I came here and documented. You know, I was like, kind of like, didn't have the right paperwork to go to school. So, but it was a blessing in disguise because I ended up looking for a job, which my stepsister helped me out. And I worked at a travel agency um, by the ci city hall actually, where I started shooting my, my, my first blogging photos. That whole thing was just because, you know, trying to keep me sane so I don't go insane not going to school you know it's like it's, it's kind of hard you know knowing you're gonna graduate and knowing all your friends are going to school and then you know that you're not but then you also have to lie because you don't want people to know that you're undocumented because back then you know just being undocumented or considered illegal alien was such like a harsh word that it makes you scared to even just like kind of like open up to people which is how it is now they have the dream act 
and all these other like movements where you're not ashamed anymore to just be that because it's not your fault you know i came here you know it's not knowing that what's going to happen to me it's going to happen which you know i don't regret because you know you, you at the end of the day it's all to live a better life i remember when facebook just came out with um albums so i just started posting um just random photos like i would take because i got a i got a, um, a nikon cool pics for christmas that year the one with ashton kutcher all over the commercial he was like yo so cool like walking around the party with my cool pics you know so that so that i i got that for christmas and i started using that and shooting with that so i would just shoot anything i would shoot pictures of my food every day and this was before like whatever people would do and take photos and i would take photos of like things i would buy at like thrifting or vintage shopping and like just posting it on um on facebook and you know i just kind of used it more than just posting a status and you know and like other things because even back then it was such a different time so people will look at you posting yourself all the time and they're gonna be like who's this vain like mofo over here posting his outfits every day but like it's really not even that because I'm not I'm not, I'm not a type of person that likes to have attention on me or like which is kind of like ironic because people always assume because I do my job that I always want all this attention but that's not true it's just like I fell into this world because I was just doing what I'm passionate about which is like thrifting putting clothes together and like just posting um, my outfits just so I could have a visual diary. And then it kind of just grew from there, like Tumblr came out and there's another site called Lookbook, which is basically what I do, but all over the world, people just post their outfits every day. And it's just so like, it's like a community. And that was like the start of OOTD before it was even like, there weren't even any hashtags back then, it was crazy. So that lookbook and then Tumblr and just posting, just being consistent about it without really, you know, no end goal. Like you just kind of like do it because even back then you don't even get paid to do these things. It was just really just passion, you know? And, and then you meet more people and then it's almost just kind of like you all have this community and you post every day and you just kind of compliment each other and it drives you to keep posting because then you have other people that relate to it too and and i think that's like how community is you know like with streetwear community and like sneaker community it's all it's all encouragement of like just like you know posting your outfits every day and just kind of like hyping each other up and then you meet more people like you that also like love to thrift and vintage shop and and then from there it kind of just I kind of just got a, got a following organically. I don't even like saying following or fans or wh whatever. I just kind of like, these are people that I really relate to a lot by just like communicating with them by like understanding that what I like is what they like too. And then without even meeting each other, you kind of have that bond, you know? Now, like anyone could just blow up and anyone could just act celebrity-ish or whatever, you know, cause it's social media. So back then, even though you get, even if you get featured in the slightest thing, it's like already like an accomplishment and um but i wasn't even looking at it that way but it somehow just worked out like if i were to start now i wouldn't because i it's just too invasive everything now you know everything everyone knows everything about you and and i don't like that part of it i only really like the the creative side of it you know so that's why when you look at my page and you look at my feed it's really just fashion heavy and I say what I need to say on my stories, you know, because I like to curate it uh, for fashion. Because at the at end of the day, people follow me because of fashion, you know. I am a full-time um, content creator slash blogger slash photographer slash creative, period. Like, I I do, I could, um, I work with a brand and I could be everything, you know. But sometimes I need to hire help too. Sometimes I would hire Frank as a photographer or like a videographer. But at the end of the day, I have um, knowledge of every single thing because you know I started someone that would just do it on my. And plus, it's my aesthetic, so I always want. No one knows your aesthetic better than you. So like, at the end of the day, like my shot, it was always still be how I want it to be. You know, so it's not like I'm pretending to be something just for something. It's like, okay, that's who he really is, and that's it. The, the, the thing I love about the whole blogging thing is I created so many friendships, like best friendships too. Because um, you meet so many people and um, you just kind of learn and like, I don't know, you grow from that. You know, when you like kind of like, then you understand the importance of every person you meet in your life and how much impact they've done 
or will do without you even knowing it. That's why every person I meet, I try to like, kind of like, you know, unless the vibes are isn't there I kind of like walk away but if it's there like I try to keep it going that's why most of my friends are still my friends like you know because because when you find people that you connect with you don't want to let that go because that's really hard especially these days when um when everyone is kind of like arguing all the time and like you know even one single opinion could change a friendship or something like that so when you find people that know you for you regardless if you don't get on the same level of like your um, opinions but they understand that you could talk about it and you guys could talk about it and from there like that connection is so important because you really need someone that could understand you for your faults and for your rights and support you you know and i feel like that's um kind of lost now because a lot of people like kind of like turn on each other just just for like little slight things you know i'm scared to plan um but i know everything's gonna be fine you know like i want to get i want to i want to act you know but i also want to one day own a shop and then you know, I, I never know, but like, I know it's gonna lead me there because cause I trust myself now because knowing like I struggled so much growing up with so many things, knowing where I'll end up now. So I kind of know, I, I kind of trust where it's gonna go and it's just gonna be positive, you know? And, and I, I'm the type of person that you, I think everything happens for a reason, like it leads to somewhere because of things that you do that lead like that led to that moment so whatever happens happened with me you know uh in my space I, I think failure i mean that's the thing like my space is still so new it's kind of like it's been here for years but it's still new at the same time but you, but the scary part is you just don't know where it's gonna go like who knew that like someone that just wears clothes every day becomes like a blogger slash i don't even like the word influencer because i feel like everyone has influence um but like influencer could influence people and then get paid to have you know opinions about certain things i get a lot of questions too about it like how did you get so big blah 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 and it's always like i tell them the right thing but they're it, to them it probably it, it sounds like it's like a long path you know because they a lot of people want instant gratification these days that's why you see a lot of people a lot of kids are a photographer one time and then they're a dj again and then now they're like into fashion because it's like it's hard to grasp like if it's not getting even though it's good shit, just because people aren't seeing it, some people get, they lose their interest because everyone depends on other people's opinions rather than what you really, really dig about it, like your own opinions, you know what I mean? I don't know, like, I think it's shifting though because like even then, like now you do see that um, everyone's getting recognized too, but that's not even like within the past two years because even just before then, like most brands would just, work with white influencers and bloggers you know you could just tell and then now you could tell and then now and now you see them and you see their page all of a sudden it's all like poc stuff and like you know but it's growth and it's a change and that's how you change things when you actually make that step forward to actually try to change the game you know my advice i always say and i know that it sucks because it i always just i'm i'm like if i'm legit i'm just gonna be like it's gonna take a while because you know you you gotta find yourself and you gotta if you really want to do this, you got to find what you really love and you're passionate about and you got to be consistent and you got to think of it as a passion rather than making money right away. You know, because when you think of money right away, you, that's all you're going to think about. It's like, okay, well, I'm not making money. It's been two months. And I'm like, dude, it's been two months. It doesn't take two months to make, you know, it takes a while. So just um, passion and be authentic and like what you like and put out there what you like and if people don't like it i guarantee you there's going to be people that will and those people are the ones that's going to matter the people that will just support you no matter what you know i think i just had it i i, I don't know if that's something like braggadocious to say but it's it's like you know i never really i used to always think if it's a talent because i used to style too um to be into clothes and know how to put it together and i think it is and um and just knowing that and then when you get compliments from people how you know and then you could just tell and then that, that just boosts your confidence and it just keeps going from there and then and then you're just kind of known as this person you know you built this reputation already of who you really are and then you get to like go outside and be who you really are and there's nothing more awesome than that like who else would could go outside right now and like here in the heat with the cowboy hat and like short shorts and like white socks, you know? And I, 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 I like it. Like, you know, like I said, I feel more naked when I dress like more casual, you know? 
when I started, um, since I was just doing it for me, and I'm like, you know, like a small fish, you know, in a, I mean, a big fish in a small, like, you know, so I was the only one doing what I was doing, really. And there's, you, you know, probably one or two more people. And everyone was just doing their thing. Um, brands weren't picking influencers yet who to pick. So it was just more awesome. It's more support. Then, then once it becomes money is involved, then yeah, absolutely. Everyone's gets, everyone gets competitive. And then you start um, curating your more to um, your, your um, feed or your images to look more better. And to like, you know, because now, now it's a portfolio, you know? So you can't just be having like just standing shots of your thing. You got to have a presentation. But luckily for me, I've always had that because I've always presented my my um, my aesthetic as like someone who's a movie lover because I used to work at a video store and someone who loves thrifting because I used to work at a thrift store and vintage because I used to work, you know, it's all things that you pick up. It's like kind of like Forrest Gump. You guys ever watch Forrest Gump? And, you know, and even Slumdog, too, when he picks up all these traits from meeting every people in his life, you know, and then he becomes who he is at the end of the movie because he learned all these things from people he met. And same thing with Slumdog Millionaire, if you've ever seen that movie. Like, every answer he answered, he got it all right. And people were suspicious how he got it right. But the reason why he got it right, because he lived his life and meeting all these people. And it's just somehow all these questions, really, like, just came back to those moments where he got an answer. So it's just, that's just how my journey is. Like, everything I've done in life, um, it's all kind of, like like smudge into one thing to become what I do now, which is kind of awesome because, you know, if I wasn't undocumented and, you know, I did it the right way, I probably would have gone to college, probably would have done something way different to what I do now and just probably have, you know, a normal, non-exciting life, but maybe not, you know, but what I do now, like, I don't regret anything because it led me to this moment where we're talking and me talking about how it led me to this moment. So it's kind of crazy. I think my job is hard, but it's not as hard. It's a, there's this concept, uh, a misconception like how um, if you're an influencer, like people just think it's just so easy because all you do is take photos. But no, it's like, no, you gotta, especially if I'm, I'm my own boss, I gotta take care of the emails. I gotta sell myself all the time. I gotta, you know, know how to respond. I gotta be consistent with the posting. You gotta know what time to post. You gotta know, you gotta know how to edit. You gotta know how to, um, you know talk proper meetings and like you know you know just like all these things that you i didn't know because i was just a kid in bayonne and then i was just thrown in this world of fashion and then all of a sudden i'm going to like fashion week and like meeting all these people but you know i'm just a kid that was in a small town that didn't really know brands like that because i used to just thrift by appearances of the clothes not by by names you know so it was such a, such a, in that way, it's like a culture shock in the fashion world of what I learned, you know? And then it kind of sucks sometimes then you realize that it is competition and then people, you get used and then it's not really genuine and, you know, just how it is in music and movies, you know? You, you could be the best actor and you could have the, or like the best dresser, the coolest aesthetic, but if you're, um, if you're not hype with the, with the people or you're not, your followers are not as big, then it's not gonna matter. That's why, that's another thing where I, don't like about social media it's about it's followers first and then and then aesthetic and like your your like like um talent second you know they'd rather like get someone with a million followers who's so basic than someone with a real talent that can present something new so i i, I think that's going to shift soon where you, you're just going to see more creatives rather than people that just standing in front of photos. I think um, this is just my opinion. I think Asians are the best dressed. And we, I think we influence a lot in the fashion space. And I love that there's more leaders coming out that are, you know, that are out there to see more so we could expose more of that Asian culture in our, in fashion. Influencers are definitely not respected because of um, the new type of influencers. People forget, people forget the ones that existed before Instagram the reason why the word influencers exist, you know, those people that, you know, that influence the word influencer. Uh, but they only see, because it just blew up once the word is out there, so people's perception of the influencers are the bad perception of influence. You know, people that just stand and then like in front of cameras and just do, or like go to like a restaurant and demand a free food, like those type of like, those are the new faces of it and it sucks. 
that's why I don't associate, that's why I always say I'm a content creator or I'm a menswear blogger because that's who I am and that's what I did when I was starting and that's still what I'm doing and I'm more than just an influencer, you know? You know, before um, I, I even really knew about brands and the way I put clothes together, like I never looked at lookbooks or fashion shows, like I would just put clothes the way I do. And in my head, I think I'm doing it on my own, but then you see later on that it's always been like that. So it's like, I, then that's when I knew I'm kind of doing something right because I'm, I'm in the right path of doing something anyway. Just, just because I thought in my head that I was doing it on my own too, discovering things, but the fact that people have discovered it already, it kind of like makes me like what I do more because I really am meant to be in this space because I understand the whole, like just like how someone says, oh, that guy has great basketball IQ. It's kind of like how I feel like I have good fashion IQ. And that's not even trying to brag about the whole thing. I feel like just, I, I'm meant to just be in this world and I understand now, you know? As I've gotten deeper with um, my job, I realized that um, challenging myself because I'm not as tall or like, you know, not as fit. I don't have broad shoulders, ow. I don't have, and I'm weak. Uh, <laughs> um, and then you challenge yourself to like look at things differently and try new things to get to a an end goal whereas to some people it's easy because you know if you're six feet tall then you're just kind of like a hanger for clothes you just look good automatically you know but someone like me i have to work harder to to um get there but at the end of the day it's still the same end goal like you know looking the way you want to look and finding out ways to achieve it and that's another lost th lost thing with influencers they don't do it for themselves anymore they do it for the people. So it's like this biggest irony of, you're supposed to be an influencer, but you're influenced by everyone else. You know, your job is to be the trendsetter and you set the trend. Your job is not to like look for the trends and then follow it. So that's the, that's the thing that's like how people see it now. So I'm still very, that's why I'm glad I started then because my mentality is still how it was then. And um, I, I don't like, um, I know my friends always tease me about like, oh, like Danny, like, you know, you know, he's famous, he's verified, right? Blah, blah, blah. But I'm never like, if you meet me, like, you know, I never even brag about that or do say s things like that to make me seem like, like I have this whatever status or whatever, you know, following as they say. I don't, I don't like that idea of like flexing like that just to like come off like you're cooler than someone else, you know? I, I just think I fell into this space and I'm lucky and fortunate and people ended up liking my stuff and and it's just something that happened organically and I'm just super fortunate that it happened. And to be on top of that, also a person of color, a Filipino American, a Filipino Asian, Asian American or just someone who's five, seven, skinny, you know, to make it like that and you don't have the particular look to for someone to make it, I think it's such a cool thing because then it just kind of gives everyone a chance because when they see someone like me, it's like, damn, then, yeah, I could do it too, you know? Are my parents proud? Um, yeah, I'm sure they are now. I mean, you know, being Filipino, like I said, um, they don't really express it out loud, you know? But then when you go home, I visit, you see the little magazines I was in that's just there and it's like those little signs and sometimes like it all, almost makes it worth it that they don't show emotions because when they do it hits more so when you get told I love you every day just like another I love you just it becomes a common thing so when it comes to that and you go home and you see that little magazine it's like whoa okay it hits you because they don't really say it but they don't need to say it you know it's like if I had the shoes and just throw it away okay <laughs> Hi, I'm Denny Bamaseda. I'm Filipino-American, and you're tuned in to Shoes Off.